Hey guys, Christine here, designer at Zerp. Welcome to the final part of our foundation CSS tutorial. For the last couple of weeks, you've been learning all about the basics of CSS and how to write it, and even dove into some of foundation CSS to see how we do things around here. Today, we're gonna teach you how to write your own custom CSS on top of foundation components. If you missed last week's lesson, click here to catch up. Let's get started. So foundation comes with a bunch of built-in components. Um, some of the most used elements on the web are built as components inside of foundation. Um, this makes it really easy to build out things like buttons or menus, um, breadcrumbs, things like that. Uh, foundation has some basic styles for all of these things to make it a lot easier to prototype your website. And the best way to learn about how to use um, these components is to look at our docs. Um, so in our docs, you'll find um, very detailed documentation on how to um, build out a component in your HTML and how you can customize them with our custom modifiers. And today I'm actually going to teach you guys how you can customize a certain um, foundation component. So I'm going to head to my foundation.css file. Um, this is just a foundation, um, the foundation project that I downloaded. So the first thing you want to do um, is, it's really helpful to kind of look up the component that you want to style inside of our foundation.css file just to see what styles are used to create that um, component. So let's say we want to check out the callout component. Um, I'm just gonna do uh, command F and search for that component inside of the CSS file. Um, and you can see that um, these are the basic styles that go into creating um, this basic callout component. And um, you see all this like other stuff and these are all just modifiers. Um, so if you were to use these modifier classes along with our component, it would change them in um, small ways. And we'll take a look at how you would use those modifiers and how to customize those modifiers later as well. Hey there, K-Ball here from Zerg. I hope you're enjoying Christine's lesson and we'll get right back to it. But first I wanna let you know about an awesome opportunity. If you wanna develop like a pro, you really should be using a front end framework. Zurb's open source foundation framework is used by millions of developers to 10x their productivity and deliver professional websites. And we have an opportunity for you to learn from the core team who built it. Click the link right up there to learn about our next live webinar where you'll be able to ask questions to the core team, learn about the entire framework and go from zero to website in no time flat. Check it out. And now back to Christine. So let's just get started by throwing in a call out in um, our website. Um, and for those of you who watched our last series, our Zero to Website series, you'll recognize this website. This is the portfolio that we threw together um, in our last uh, tutorial series. So I'm just going to create my row and column here. Oops. And then throw in a call out. So by default, the foundation callout is very minimal. Um, there's not that much styles applied to it. And all of our components are built this way um, with very minimal styles so that it's easier to um, customize these components later. So let's customize this callout a little bit. Um, we're not going to change any of the default CSS in our foundation.css file. What we're gonna do is we're going to head to app.css and then we're going to target that exact same callout class that foundation, um, that the default foundation is targeting. So let's just start by giving it a border, top. Um, and I've actually built out an example of a nice callout that we can create. So we're gonna make our callout look like this. Um, border top, Let me grab this color. Let's do two pixels of solid, 
And I'm going to paste this hex code in here. Uh, and then there's a box shadow as well. Um, there's six pixels. Let's do point one opacity. So I'm going to give it a nice box shadow also. Let's take a look at so as you can see, the top border has been applied to our callout, but we're still seeing this default like gray border here, and we don't want that. So the reason that's happening is because um, when we're writing custom styles in our app.css, um, it's going to always apply whatever styles are in here because, um, because the app.css file is called after the foundation.css file. So anything here will overwrite um, any of the foundation CSS. Um, but since we haven't targeted you know, the entire border, it's our callout is still taking the gray border from the default callout um, component. So I'm just going to get rid of that border. Let's do border in zero. And then it's gone. <laughs> Um, so this is our new um, custom callout. So whenever I use this callout class, it's going to take on this style by default. There are also um, several modifier classes that you can use with foundation components. Um, so for this particular component, for the callout component, um, there are sizing and color classes that you can use with this callout in order to change the size or the color of this callout to fit a certain you know space on your website. So just to take a look at the CSS for some of these um, some of these modifiers, um, all of these here, um, these are all modifier classes. So these are all defining um, you know different colors or different sizes of you know, the callout, and that's actually overwriting some of these um, properties up here in the default comp uh, callout component. So, for example, let's just throw in some modifiers here. Let's do a large um, success callout. Refresh this. So now our callout is a lot bigger. Um, what the large class did is it added um, more padding to this callout, so it looks like it's a lot bigger. Um, the text size is still the same. Um, also, the success modifier um, changed the background color of this callout to be green um, so that it, it expresses a successful state of this callout. Um, and it's good to note and good practice to always name your classes in this way, um, to name them with, uh, after the intention of the class rather than the outcome. So for this um, color modifier that we used, um, it, we used the class success, but what it's actually doing is it's turning the background color to be green. Um, so we named it success because that's the intention of this class. You can also create your own modifier classes for instances where um, this, these default modifier classes aren't enough to change your, um, to change your component in the way that you want. So let's say we wanted to create a modifier class to invert this um, callout style. Um, so I'm going to name the modifier class inverted. And then in my app.css, let's target callout inverted. So to create an inverted style, I'm going to set the background color to whatever my border color was. And then let's just get rid of that top border. And then we also want to change the color of the text um, so that it's readable. Let's just change it to white. So now we have a nice inverted, you know, callout style. 
Um, and this is a modified style, so this is not the default style. If I'm using just the regular callout, it's going to take on um, the previous style. So for example, actually just call out. So here we have our regular default callout and then our modified inverted callout. So that's how you would create your own um, modifier classes. If you wanted to you know, use the same modifier classes that um, Foundation has defined, so if you wanted to redefine a large um, callout, um, you can also do that in your app.css. Um, and we do the exact same thing that we did to overwrite this style. Um, so let's say we wanted to redefine the large callout. So here in our foundation.css, a large callout is actually just applying three rems of um, padding to the callout. So if you want it, the default large um, callout to be even bigger than that, let's, let's target that exact same um, modifier class. And then let's do padding five rims. And then So now that's an even bigger callout. <laughs> um, that's one way that you can modify our foundation modifier classes, so that you can use the same syntax and have it to have it change the style to however you want it to. Um, you can even change the color modifiers if you want it to, um, but there is actually an easier way to do that with our foundation customizer. Um, so our color modifiers are taking on a default, um, pro like a default foundation color palette, but you can actually set the default color palette to fit whatever colors your website should have. Um, so let's, um, to do this, we would do this like right before we download the foundation um, project. Um, so here on this page, on our foundation.zerb.com, um, slash sites slash download page. This is where you would download um, the foundation project. Um, you can actually customize your, um, your default CSS. So here you can customize things like the types of components you want to be included in your um, CSS file. Um, you can change you know, the number of columns um, that you have by default. You can change like the gutters. So there's some customization that you can already do before you actually download the foundation project. So if you wanted to um, set a default color palette to your project, um, you can actually do that here. So in our foundation palette, um, a primary color is blue, secondary color is gray, um, and then all of these colors um, can be redefined right here in our customizer. So if, um, if you were to change these colors to whatever colors your brand needs to be, um, when you downloaded it, um, you would be able to use these primary and secondary modifier classes, and they would take on whatever brand colors you input it into this customizer. So that's the best way to actually customize the color modifiers. Um, rather than doing that in your app.css file, you can do that you know, before you even download the project. Um, so you don't have to write additional CSS. So the key thing to remember about building on top of foundation components is that you never want to write or rewrite any CSS inside of our foundation.css file. Um, you always want to do that inside of the app.css file. And um, you always want to target the exact same class as the component that you're using. And that's about everything you need to know to start styling on top of foundation components. Thank you guys for staying with us these past couple of weeks, and we hope that you've come out of this series with some new confidence in building your next project. If you have any questions about something that I mentioned today, feel free to leave a comment below. To learn more about foundation from the people who built it, feel free to check out our Intro to Foundation webinar course. In this course, you learn all about foundation, its components, and how to use them. 
If you haven't yet, click on the subscribe button so that our Yeti can get some new shades. These 3D glasses have really been hurting his eyes. See you guys next week.